Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I want to talk to you a little bit about how social media affects relationships specifically for the dismissive avoidant attachment style. So um, this is a really interesting topic and this actually came from a question I had from one of our members inside PDS and they talked about like what are the differences between how social media has an effect on like how a DA does relationships, especially like in the dating stage, um, but as the, the relationship progresses overall. So I wanted to highlight a few key things and I'll make this into a series for the other attachment styles as well. There are certain things that can be confusing and there are certain downsides to social media as a whole. Now, just like with anything else, I really believe in like moderation. Like if you use social media once a week or you check in and it helps you reconnect with old friends or things like that, like that's a, it can be a beautiful thing. It's a tool. But if you're relying on social media to get your needs met, like let's say for example, you have a need for connection. And so you opt in to get your needs met through social media instead of through face-to-face -face human interaction. And that becomes a crutch that you use to avoid vulnerability. Well, now we have like a potentially problematic situation. And so this is one of the major things and, and there are quite a few, but um, that can really affect DAs. And, and on the downside of social media, when relied on too much, dismissive avoidance may use social media to, in a way, connect and um, potentially even like romantically connect without having to do some of the work. Um, because one of the big things that a dismissive avoidant needs to be working on internally in order to sort of move to the next level of living in their lives is that internal reprogramming work around their fear of vulnerability. And so sometimes what we'll see is social media allows somebody who's afraid of being vulnerable to basically get surface level connection um, in a variety of different formats without having to go inward and do that deeper work. And what I always say when it comes to our needs is you can imagine our needs are like buckets and we can opt in to decide like, hey, let's open a faucet all the way open and, and the, the water can just stream right out into the bucket and we can fill the bucket really quickly and efficiently and in a very fulfilling manner. Um, which would be like, you know, the analogy would be like to go sit down and go out for dinner and spend time with people having a deep conversation or sharing your opinions or your ideas and bonding with people. Or we can open the faucet the tiniest bit where like the drops are just coming out to fill the bucket and the drops will still fill the bucket, but it's just going to take a lot longer. <laughs> You're going to lose out time that could have been spent doing other things before you can actually get your needs truly met for connection. And, and that's how I think social media sort of is. It's like, you get such small drops of connection in such small ways that yes, you may get like the hits of connection you need to avoid actually doing a deeper dive into things, but you're not necessarily like getting like the deep dive into connection and having to do any internal work that could allow you to get that connection met in a more fulfilling manner um, that will help you again, like have better relationships, feel more fulfilled with your relationship area of life as a whole. And this goes for like friendships too, not just uh, romantic relationships. So anyways, um, so this is one thing. Sometimes DAs can be enabled to sort of avoid doing the work, um, working through their fear of vulnerability, that kind of stuff. Sometimes too, DAs will get their needs met for like a little bit of validation and reinforcement and connection by like connecting with people over social media, but not actually doing like a deeper dive. Um, so this would sort of be like the number two thing in here, like not doing a deeper dive into like actually seeing somebody in person, right? I've seen DAs have entire like almost romantic relationships just purely on social media without meeting the person because they kind of get their connection, that security of having somebody there, a little bit of like attention and closeness without actually like making the effort to do the vulnerable work and put themselves outside of their comfort zone that's often required to um, really meet up with somebody in person and, and you know, see each other's flaws in person or whatever it might be. Um, so that can be a big thing for sure. And then also sometimes dismissive avoidance um, will connect a lot on social media, but then not as much in person because they don't want to give their time too much that they're usually using to self-soothe. And it can be, it can keep them in that sort of box where it enables them to not have to like do the work past, um, you know, giving up some of their time with themselves and being in that sort of anxious relationship and, you know, internally to like being anxious about losing their own time or connection to themselves or independence or autonomy. And so again, it can allow them to like, some of the things that they really have to work through if they want to become more secure, more fulfilled, sort of move and live at that next level of living can be enabled to like be avoided to a certain degree. So I would say those three things have a massive impact for sure. Um, but I would also say 
some of the other things to pay attention to about social media and relationships with dismissive avoidance um, is that often with different attachment styles, and this is sort of like our point number four, um, often different attachment styles have different expectations of how social media should be used while in a relationship, right? We may have um, anxious, preoccupied individuals who expect like, hey, when we're in a committed relationship, we should be posting on social media, you know, frequently with each other and showing pictures of each other so people know we're in a relationship. And the anxious preoccupied person may take that as a form of commitment, a form of like loyalty, a sign of like trust. Um, and a lot of times dismissive avoidance just don't like posting, posting on social media because they're just a little bit avoidant. They like their privacy. Um, and so sometimes they won't do that. And that can cause like these miscommunications and pain points with FAs. It may cause like ideas that, oh, like I can't trust you completely either, right? And so you can see these different dynamics that can take place based on the attachment style and who they're in a relationship with. And by the way, if you want to do a really deep dive into like how a dismissive avoidant is with an anxious preoccupied in a relationship, with a fearful avoidant, um, with a secure person, um, and, and really see like the different dynamics that are, at, that are at play and what works, what won't work, the different patterns you'll each need to reprogram the the skills the tools the needs all the steps you'll need to take to really like move the relationship and help it stay thriving and lasting if you're in a relationship with another insecure attachment style um you can check out these courses we have that are all about like the attachment style interactions and relationships and, and cover all those key points and you can check them out for free for seven days um, by clicking the link in the description box below um and you can go into the webinar library and you'll see it there you can type in da with ap or da with with fa and there's like these four hour um courses that go into everything you will need to know and all the steps you need to heal so that you can make the relationship really work. Um, so anyways, you can check that out. But um, I, I would say that's a really important part is that social media can have the, can create this sort of like, unless you're communicating about your expectations with each other on social media, it can create these sort of like unwritten rules that people have going into relationships thinking like, oh, if you care about me, you'll post about me once a week. Um, but that's just not how every other attachment style is. Um, and then the last thing I would say here is that, um, sometimes dismissive avoidance too, actually I'll say two more things. Dismissive avoidance too can get into a dynamic with, um, a romantic partner where they're sort of like feeling like they will flaw find. I'll make a separate video about this, but, but dismissive avoidance, because they can be a little bit conflict avoidant, they'll often like strive for perfection in their dating life because they don't have modeling for like, Hey, it's normal to not have perfection in dating, to have things that are incompatible and then to work through those things through communication and conflict resolution skills. But because DAs don't see a lot of that modeling growing up, they're not exposed to a lot of that. Instead, they'll try to cope with like getting into a relationship and the vulnerability of it by finding like the perfect partner. Um, and that's often like a, a self-sabotaging dynamic because we're never going to have a perfect partner and we're always going to have some kind of conflict in our human experience with other people, especially when we're really close to them. It's normal, but it's how we work through that um, that really makes or breaks a relationship. And so sometimes we'll see like DAs get that part kind of reinforced where they're like, oh, you know, this person's imperfect here, but there's lots of other people I can connect with on social media. So it can kind of like give them this, this false sense of like, there's so much more else, there's so much else more out there. Um, and I hope that makes sense. Um, there's so many other people out there that I could connect with, you know, can give them this idea, which allows them to like flee relationships and enable that like flight oriented behavior as well. They can maybe come a little bit too early um, or at the expense of not being able to do the work to work through things because it's, that's a necessity at times in relationships. And then the very last thing I would say is eventually because DAs do have really high needs for security, for comfort, for harmony, eventually they often do seek out and long for deeper, more committed relationships. Um, so social media can sometimes sabotage that, but often DAs won't know how to find their way there um, and will feel like they should just write it off or, you know, things like that, which really it's, it's not that you're not capable of having a much deeper, more meaningful, fulfilling relationship. It's just that you, nobody gave you the tools yet, but once you have the tools, you'll be able to move the needle and be able to have that happen and, and are worthy and deserving of a loving, committed relationship if that's something you choose to want. Um, so anyways, I hope this makes sense. Um, really important dynamic. Again, if you want to check out those, those attachment cell courses with the different attachment cell interactions, Actions, you can click the link in the description box below. Um, and thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.